You know what that means. All right, what's going on everybody? Today is an exciting, exciting day because I picked up a car that I've been talking about forever. You guys probably don't know what it is from me just saying that. But so anyway, this is a whole thing. I'm gonna have to kind of tell you guys the story and not take too long. So this was supposed to be a different car. This was supposed to be a car that I was supposed to pick up last week before I went out of town. That's not the case. Um, that car was gonna be a Turbo M30 535E34. And I feel horrible. I was talking with a guy, a local guy, and I was planning to get it, right? Like I had the money for it and we couldn't find time before I left. So it couldn't happen. So today was supposed to be that day. And right before I was ready to, you know, kind of head out, I got a call and I'll get into that in a minute. When I got the call for this car, I had to. And you guys will see this car, I won't say anything yet, but basically my cousin, I had to meet up with my cousin to give him some stuff. His neighbor has this BMW. He's had it for, I think he's the original owner. I didn't know any of this, but I saw it four years ago in person. The guy let me check it out. And it was the most mint car I could imagine. So I was like, hey, if you ever want to sell it, let me know. Thinking, all right, this guy's probably gonna want an arm and a leg for it. So anyway, long story short, fast forward to now, I'm on the phone with my cousin, told him I was buying a car, somehow mentioned the neighbor, and I said, you know what? Or he said, let me ask him if he still wants to sell it or if he wants to sell it at all, and I was like, do it. He did it, I get a call 20 minutes later, come with this amount, and it's yours. And the amount was what I was looking to spend for it. It was, uh, it was, it, it was cheaper than I, I figured he would want, and because of that, I'm going to get it. So now we're heading there, I got about an hour and a half drive ahead of me, and uh, we're gonna go snag this beauty, and then I'm gonna show you guys it. So, we're picking this up the next day. I ended up taking my time buying it and talking to the owner, and it was my cousin's neighbor, so I was talking to my cousin for a while. So we got way sidetracked, and I didn't get home till really late. So I didn't want to unload it, I wanted to film unloading it. But, I guess I'll just give you guys a glimpse now, huh? You know what that is. So, I guess I'll film me unloading it and then I'll walk around and uh, show you guys it. It's dirty right now, I gotta wash it. Maybe I'll do that in this video, but, um, cause I got a lot of stuff going on. Today's the day I blew my fan on my, or blew my radiator hose on my 540. But actually I'll give you guys a better look here. So this is a 1982 633 CSI and E24 like I've been wanting and you guys know I've been wanting this so I'm stoked I'm gonna unload this thing and then we'll go over everything about it Now that she is clean, I can justifiably show you guys my new 90,000 mile 633 CSI. It's a 1982 five speed car, Schwartz one on black interior, an absolute gem and a beautiful, beautiful car. So I'll go around and I'll show you guys everything, just give you guys kind of a a look at this thing pinstriping on it we got the Texas plate this is the original plate from 82 so the original owner had it 82 to 88 that's when the guy who bought it up in Wisconsin where I got it from bought it 
and you see in the trunk we actually have the original dealer plate from Davis Moritz BMW in Texas I don't know where in Texas this is but this is the dealer plate that the car came off the lot with the equivalent to like whatever the dealer plates you see today are to even have this is just a gem I got a 635 or a 6 series book here I got a car cover the tool kit is nearly full it's a red handled tool kit these are worth decent money not as much as the green I don't think I could be wrong unless the red's more expensive I don't know I might have to sell my tool kit out of this to recoup some funds but this is an E12 based car so you can see the tail lights look awfully familiar uh, the suspension is E12 based the engine is the M30 B33 I want to say I don't think it's the 3.4 I think that's the 635s I, I could be wrong about that I need to read read up on that but here's the interior of the car so this is pretty much E12 based the door handles with the handle like that which is really rad but these are just super sweet they got this little pull down fold thing one of my favorite things about the 6 series and it's always been is the chrome well maybe not chrome but like aluminum door sills super retro black comfort seats this seat's seen you know better days every other seat's clean the back seats look like they've actually never been sat in which is crazy but uh let's get in here and look so we got the early model cluster which i've never seen before and it's actually really rad you got fuel water temp 90,239 miles and it clicks over that's the one thing i made sure to check was that it actually worked and it does work it's not frozen at 90 it is at 90,000 miles rpms you got your check control with the green lights which is really cool it's got a clarion radio some of the older guys might know this i've never heard of it in my life i believe it's original these things have a digital clock which is really crazy and then fasten belt on the dash sunroof sunroof works but um ashtray and then the shifter and this is a little zipper shift boot which is cool i did not know but these cars the rear windows go down they only go down that far they don't go down all the way but that's still a really sweet feature those are kind of scary to use i feel like those are going to break at any minute Climate controls, climate controls, really confusing on this car. Blower motor is actually the clock surround, just like my E12. I really wish I remembered more about my 635 to know what the differences are, but I'm pretty sure this is all pretty different. Dash is clean, it does have a crack here and a crack here, and one little one there, which sucks, but not bad by any means. To open the trunk, or the hood, you pull down that, and then it pops up right here and we go in here and this is this is nothing special this is clearly a, a car that sat most of its life but I mean you have original zinc coating on like the manifold brackets and I mean it's 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 insane brand new battery just look at this fuse box look how clean the f I don't even want to touch it like look how clean those fuses are like mint I gotta do a detail in here brake fluid was flushed in 10 3 2003 which is hilarious, but um, I, I don't know. I gotta, I gotta do some research on which M30 this is exactly. I know the like the 635s were M30 B34s because the manifold says 3234, which is weird. But uh, I gotta do all the stuff in here. I, I want to maintain or uh, bring it back. So you know, spark stuff, a lot of gaskets, all that. I want this thing running 100%. I have a absolutely full book of service records which i'll actually go grab right now it is the coolest thing ever this car has all the service records from 82 till now and it's it's the best part about buying a car that has been in the same person's ownership for a long time so this car actually was owned the guy i got it from so this is a little bit of the story i kind of didn't tell i got that car up in wisconsin and that car the guy that owned it was neighbors with my cousin lived right right across the street from him and I saw that car two years ago and I said to my cousin, hey, if your neighbor wants to sell it, let me know. He said, will do. Two years go by, never heard anything. And then I'm going to pick up the car. I told you guys about the E34. And I said, somehow we were talking about it and whatever we got on the topic of this. And he said, hey, come with the cash and it's yours. And the price was too good to pass up for what it is, a 90,000 mile original 
E24 with not a speck of rust. That is the best part of the entire car. There is, I'll get on there and show you guys. It is the cleanest frame rails I've ever seen on a car. But anyway, I got a box full of service manuals, some spare parts, and then right here, this is the goods right here. So, just this is insane. So this is all documentation from the original dealership it came in. So this is, let's see, 86. What'd the car do? Uh, oil filter and exhaust parts. So I mean like I have everything. Like this is so freaking cool to have service records from the 80s. It is it is the coolest thing ever. A full manual, full service records for this car. It is literally an artifact. It, it's it's amazing. Like it the the paint is clean. It's it's such a beautiful car. Every feature works in it. Like here, let's get under here and see. Like do you see these frame rails and these pinch welds? They they've never seen winter. The car has never seen a winter in its life. Came from Texas. Then in 87, when the guy I got it from bought it, he, um, or it actually had one owner in between. So it was in Texas, came actually to Lyle, Illinois, which is really close by. That guy owned it for only a year or two. And then the guy I bought it from bought it and he had it since 87. So from 87 till 2021, this guy has owned it and has been in his garage. Always garage kept, never driven in the winter never seen snow it's it's completely amazing how like how well kept it was and because of that is why it's even here today a lot of these cars are long gone from neglect and sitting outside but this car is clean inside and out and i am so grateful for that i i literally could not imagine owning a car from 87 till now like almost 30 years that's that's insane to me that is that is bonkers I mean, just, let's just go around and look more. I mean, like, look at the paint. Like, it shines. Black is a hard color to, to keep nice. It could definitely use a buff, but it's, it's not bad by any means. And you'll notice here, the quarter, no rust. So I didn't have the YouTube channel when I had my 635, but my 635 was a pretty clean car. Had a hole here, rusted hole. These things are notorious for rotting away at the quarters right here because a bunch of dirt gets stuck in there. So this car does not have that. There's there's no rust. It's it's pristine, and I'm so grateful for that. And I, I don't even feel like I deserve to have this. This is kind of a similar situation to my E12. I've always wanted one of these to lower and put wheels on, and my blue one wasn't that car because it was a little too rusty, and I don't even think this is that car because I think it's too clean. I would feel bad messing with this but the thing is it's an e12 based car so it's the exact same issue i ran into with my e12 where you can't really get suspension for it and that's the issue and that's why i'm not really sure what's gonna happen you know it's it's a car that's too clean for me to own i know that but i've always wanted one and do i sell this and buy a less clean one that's a later model so i could do suspension i don't know i'm not really sure where i want to go with it right now but I do know that I am really stoked to have this car. And here, I'll fire it up right here for you guys. So you guys can hear this 90,000 mile M30 per. Here, fires right up. Blower motor works. AC is actually kind of cold. I think it does work. Here's the check control, brake lining, brake fluid. Um, I can't remember how these are supposed to work. I can't remember if they're all supposed to light up if they're good or if they only light up when they're bad. My guess is that's a brake pad wear sensor and it could be low on brake fluid. So I have to give this car a full look over uh, as you'd expect from someone who owned it for a long time. It didn't get driven mileage wise, but you know, everything's old. So all the fluids are old, even the oil change. I mean, I think the guy put, I mean, I think he said he's driven it like once in the past five years. Like it, it has not been driven. And that's honestly a double-edged sword because while this car is a perfect body and all that stuff, which is the most important, the oil pan gasket leaks like a sieve. And it didn't leak in his garage, but as soon as I took it for that first drive and brought it back, it was leaking pretty good. And that's just because when you don't drive these cars, the seals really get dried up and they really don't like it. And then, so obviously once you start driving it again, they're just gonna leak really badly. So that will have to be addressed, which sucks. That's gonna be a pain. It could probably use a rear main seal. Uh, I'll, I'll probably end up doing a bunch of maintenance on this car, a lot, but uh, it's worth it to keep a car this mint on the road. I mean, like, it, it's a it's a 
beautiful car. The auto antenna works. It goes up but doesn't go down. But yeah, this thing had a valve adjustment in 92, I think, or 97. I can't remember the year. But I asked the guy and he said, yep, the record's in there. And I did see the record, but it's like from the 90s. So it's probably due again. You could hear it's, it, it actually sounds really good. Um, it's not even really ticky. But I just have to say, like, I had that M30 car here a year, or uh, the 535. That was a 190K, I think. I had my 240K mile E24. Like, this motor is just like smooth like m30s are smooth but you can just hear like the tolerances in it like just i mean just listen to this like happily tapping away all my other cars the valves were much louder it's it, you can tell it's the mileage it is because how smooth and quiet and just happy the motor is and i think that's really important and i think that's really cool you can see here 633 csi us 81 50 states emissions information we got the original genuine parts sticker still intact the r12 ac sticker the attention don't shock yourself on the coil sticker bmw schwartz and i don't really know what else to show i mean the chrome is in fantastic shape one thing that also bothered me about my 635 was it was a southern car so all these seals were rotted out so when i would wash the car they were so dry the black would just get onto my microfibers and it would ruin my microfibers but these while they're not mint they are in much better shape um these are actually e39 wheels he put on there he wanted bigger ones so these cars come stock with the 14s which are a similar design but these are the bigger ones newish tires from 2015 so it's not like it's on like the original tires it is it, it's insane like I'm gonna close that up I could not be more thrilled with this car it's it's just beautiful I gotta clean up the interior the interior is a little dirty but yeah um I'm so stoked on this I know I've been telling you guys I've been wanting a six or uh well I, I keep saying 635 I told you guys I've been wanting an e24 and the model didn't really matter to me late early I don't care just for what this is the story behind it to be in my cousin's neighbor's garage for all these years and him finally want to sell it to me he wasn't in a rush to sell it he didn't even know if he was going to sell it so for him to actually go through with selling it was kind of crazy to me that's why i literally was on my way to buy an e34 and this popped up this wasn't planned i know i've been teasing you guys telling you i've been wanting one and there will be one coming to the channel and i honestly really wasn't even expecting this to be here but the circumstances were right and I mean, it's just the best type of car to buy from an old guy who's had it since it was damn near a new car. So I'm so excited to dig into this, do the maintenance, get it road worthy. It is road worthy. It runs and drives really good. It, it drives really tight. And I'll go over that. I'll make a video of me driving this thing next. We'll go around and we'll cruise it. But yeah, I'm going to dig right in all the fluids, gaskets, all sorts of stuff. I want this thing to be solid. I don't want to have some sort of freak incident where I blow it up or do something stupid. The parts for these are really rare and it's it's just they're fragile cars at this age. I mean, but I mean even like the body like just there's hardly any dents. Like it's straight, it's true. All the trim. Like even like look at the muffler. Like look at that. It's like brand new. I think the muffler had been replaced back in the day, but regardless, it's mint. Like this is like a I mean, I've never seen, you know, I mean, you could you see some issues here and there, like there's some blemishes on the paint, like, you know, chips or here or there, some single stage issues, but like, in terms of like old BMW, it really can't get any better than this, especially when the car is 39 years old, going on 40 years old. That's a really old car, and to be in as good as condition as this is, is a rarity. So I am so thrilled. So yeah, there it is. I think I showed everything, service records. I, you know, obviously there'll be a lot more videos on this, but for now, I just want to show you guys the video of me picking it up and first, you know, kind of walk around. I'm back in an E24 and I couldn't be happier. I'm super stoked. Really the last thing I needed, but the E30 has gone and it brought me good enough money to where I could kind of step into a nicer car here and my service records are blown away, but I, I'm stoked. I hope you guys are excited for this. This is going to be a fun car and uh, yeah, thank you for watching. 
Thank you for the support, and I will see you in the next one. Peace.